This is um, the uh, Mallard AF11 series. The 117 is one of the more common transistors used in the early uh, hacker radios and a lot of the British radios of the, the, the early 60s. Um, germanium device, PNP, um, and notoriously unreliable. Um, they developed the uh, tin whisker syndrome, which is a problem with a lot of electronic um, equipment. And it's becoming more of a problem again now with the onset of lead-free solder. Um, as you can see, it's got the four connections to the transistor. Uh, you've got the collector here, which is the one on its own. This sensor lead here, or the sensor lead, the next one along to the collector, is the shield. And basically that's a screen around the transistor. Uh, the, the wire with the green insulation on it that's the base and this pin here is the emitter um, what actually happens is in the uh, inside the transistor let me try and draw a sketch of what roughly what happens the transistor is basically supported on three electrodes and that transistor the, the little transistor device the actual transistor itself is mounted on three wires and what happens is the case of the, the transistor is connected to the screen that's the screen connection and that the, the, those are the other three transistors go to the base emitter and collector and what happens is with age these tin whiskers slowly migrate from the case of the transistor all the way and eventually over years and years periods of period of time they short the transistor out so there's a short between the screen and the junctions of the transistor that stops the transistor from working altogether now one of the one of the options to get around that temporarily is to cut the, the screen lead it's not absolutely necessary you have the screen lead connected and that if the if the uh, tin whiskers haven't sort of shorted out the extra junction itself then you can remove that connection and then the transistor will operate normally however it probably won't work as well as it did because if, if there's a connection there to the screen you've got a lot of stray capacitance running slowing this transistor down and affecting its overall performance so what I tend to do and I've had a bit of a success with this is rather than cut the lead I keep the lead connected so I remain keep the link connected and I solder base emitter and collector together and then the screen lead and come off and make a connection so I've got a, a connection like flying leads or a crocodile clip here so I can do this and what I do is I charge up a capacitor say something like this capacitor here it's 0 0.1 microfarad at a thousand volts and I charge the capacitor up and what I do is I apply a thousand volts a very short burst of energy and what this does is this all this transistor is one connection now so in theory the transistor will survive the the high voltage spike and then you apply high voltage which what that in theory causes a, a flash between the the, the um, tin whiskers and I hope breaks well it does I've, I've had experience with this before it breaks the contact it burns the contact away um, and the reason why I use the higher voltage is because the bigger the voltage, the more likely you're going to burn it back further back. You're going to get, draw a bit of an arc in there and, and burn it back. Um, I've done this with a couple of hacker radios that I did about probably seven or eight years ago. And they all still work and they still have their screen connections uh, connected. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate it with this AF117 here that I've dug out of my box of bits to see if I can actually demonstrate this working on a... Uh, in real life. So what I've done is, uh, let me just uh, prop this phone up so I can, little phone camera so I can show you what I'm doing. Okay, should be focused on the transistor now. Okay, so what I've got to do, first of all I'm going to show you the um, the resistance I'm getting at the moment. I don't know if you can see the, the fluke meter in the background. Um, okay, let's focus on the fluke for the minute. So what I'm going to do I'm going to go to the screen connection of the transistor, which is the, or the shield connection, which screen shield, whatever you want to call it. Um, now, bear in mind that if if the, this transistor is good, there'll be no contact between any of the junctions of the transistor and this screen. So let me move it out of the way so I can. 
block the view of the meter. Well, it's made not very easy to do this. Okay. Here are the three junctions of the transistor. So I'm connected with the yellow crocodile clip to the screen. Right, so I'm connected to the connector. So I've got th I've got a leaky about 350k to the uh, collector of the transistor. So that's not a good start. The base of the transistor, similar sort of thing, about 350k. And the emitter, well, it's 106 ohms. So from the screen connection of the transistor to the the collect to the emitter of the transistor, there's a short or more or less a short 100, 109 ohms. That transistor won't work in the circuit, it will just be totally dead. So, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to try and clear this short um, by the principle I've just, just described. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to join those three wires together. I'm going to do that by soldering. The three junctions together so let me just try and do that now it's a bit fiddly when i'm trying to work around the camera and keep the, the transistor in shot at the same time so then i'll try and get a focus on the transistor so you can see what i'm doing i've only just found out that the, this phone i'm using which I use for most of my videos, has actually got a manual focus adjustment, which is really useful, actually. OK, so those three wires are joined together. So now I need to charge up the capacitor. And to do that, now you have to be very, very careful when you charge this up. It's only a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, but it's going to really be unpleasant if you touch it. Touch it. Now, the way I'm going to charge it up is you need a DC source. And the best thing I I use is a is an isolation tester. Let's call this old Mega here. Um, I'm going to have a go at charging this up, so get yeah, some focus on here again. So, one lead of the capacitor on one end, one the other. Bear in mind it's a non electricity capacitor, so there's no polarity. connector to stay on. Nope, hold on a second. Ah. Okay, got the connection on. So it's turned the meter to a thousand volts, so Make a ten thousand volts, so let's uh, charge up the capacitor. Okay, that capacitor's charged. What? Don't you don't release the lead on the uh, mega? You don't release the button on the mega. You hold it charged. You disconnect the cable. The cable's disconnected. So this cap's charged at a thousand volts now. So you have to be careful. Um, let's put this back on its stand. So let's see what's going on. I need to make the connection to the transistor, so... One connection to the... One connection to the uh, junctions of the transistor, the other one to the screen. And now what I'm going to do is dab it across this capacitor, so I'm about to apply the voltage to the capacitor. Um, that's better. Better view. Vantage point. So the junction leads are connected to the capacitor. I'm going to apply the flash of voltage across the capacitor, the transistor now. I saw a little flash inside the transistor. I don't know if you saw that on camera. Now, what I'm going to do as the junctions are all joined together and the connect, the leads are connected to the screen, I'm just going to make sure that there's no connection now with the fluke between those connections, see if we've blown the joint apart. Okay, that's good, it's showing zero ohms. So it's an, 
it's got no connection. The tin whiskers have been blown apart from the junction of the transistors to the screen of the uh, of the device. So in theory, if I remove the solder bridge from the uh, three junctions, we can test the transistors to see if it's still viable. So I wouldn't go to this problem normally with most transistors, but the trouble is these AF117s are a bit unique to the radio, and they're becoming very very rare. I mean, I've seen them on eBay, second-hand transistors, untested for sort of seven or eight pounds. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous, really, um, for a device that may or may not work. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go back to the... Uh, back to the fluke. I'm going to go on to diode test. Now collecting, connecting to the base. I'm going to go... So this is the base, so I'm going, first of all, I'm going to go to the collector. Right, now I'm going to the emitter. One point four volts. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is going to reverse the leads. So the negative lead, the yellow is actually the negative at the moment. This job clip is absolutely worn out. I need to throw this away. So the yellow leaves going onto the base. Let me get another lead. A bit better. Okay. Okay, let's start again from scratch. The black is now the negative lead. On the base, that's on the collector, 0.279 volts, which is what you expect for a germanium transistor. And then to the collector, 0.202, that's good. Now swap the polarity round, so the positive lead is on the base, the negative lead is now on the on the emitter, 1.474, okay, and the other transistor lead is open circuit. So it is a little bit leaky one way, let's do a collector emitter test. Okay, collector emitter shows good. Okay, so it is possible this this transistor it's certainly better than it was. It hasn't got the short anymore, and it's 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 testing probably what I how I'd expect a, a good one to test. So uh, let's we're back onto killer ohms now. So that's the base and the base and the collector. That's showing. 6.7k the other way round it's showing 40k so let's plug it into a try I think what I'm going to do is plug it into a transistor tester if it, I'm sure it's got batteries in it Yep, so let's plug this into a little Tandy um, transistor tester I've had since I was a kid. So this this will prove the transistor works or not. Let's collect... Uh, the base. Okay, well, this is a uh, this is a little transistor tester. I've had there's the transistor connected up to the little transistor tester, and you can see there that the, the dial's illuminating. So it looks like the transistor is now working. So it is worth trying this principle. If you don't want to change the transistor, just 
just charge up a capacitor and um and give it a go and just make sure that um you're absolutely sure that this capacitor is discharged before you uh stick your fingers on it because it's all a it'll give you a quite a belt so i hope you found this interesting and thanks for watching